uh, let's talk about PSC and the role of uh, uh, our possibilities of therapeutic management of this disease. Uh, I think uh, we heard a lot of from the previous speaker that uh, the PSC itself is a rare immune-mediated chronic disease. Uh, which is characterized by multifocal bile duct strictures, and uh, it's uh, very often progressive to, to liver disease. There is a very highly variable uh, uh, his, uh, clinical course of the disease. Uh, many patients could be present at the diagnosis uh, very uh, in asymptomatic, asymptomatic stage disease, uh, up to 50% of them, and it will last for a long time. And by the others, will develop, will present with the uh, inflammation, uh, with the cholangitis, uh, with a biliary cirrhosis, and advanced to a liver failure. Uh, the prevalence was mentioned by the previous speaker, and uh, uh, most patients are present with the specific, specific phenotype of uh, inflammatory bubble disease, PSC IBD, uh, which is uh, very uh, clearly uh, has a di different phenotype with the backwash colitis, uh, with the panculitis mainly on the right side, uh, rectal sparing, and high risk of the collateral cancer, even the, the increasing risk of the uh, cholangial carcinoma is very well known in PSC patients. So management of PSC is so quite challenging, and there is no other definitive treatment except uh, liver transplantation. Uh, MRCP uh, represents uh, the gold standard how to make a uh, diagnosis of PSC. ERCP should be, uh, uh, f should be, uh, f should be uh, for the patients when the, the therapeutic uh, uh, therapy of the, endos uh, the endoscopic therapy is planned, and because uh, the, the ERCP itself could be associated with the significant risk of adverse even like uh, pancreatitis or cholangitis. Uh, Differential diagnosis is very important. Uh, many of disease could uh, mimic PSC. Some of them are potential treatable, like IgG4 uh, associated uh, cholangitis or biliary sarcoidosis. Uh, portal hypertension itself could have uh, potential impact on the biliary tree, and of course, the cholangiocarcinoma represent a nightmare. Uh, the cumulative risk of cholangiocarcinoma is up to 15% over the 10 years of follow-up of the patient. Duration of PSC itself is not associated with uh, increasing risk of cholangiocarcinoma. That means even at the time of the diagnosis of PSC, uh, many of the cholangiocarcinoma are fine. And there is uh, no screening, uh, sc uh, reasonable screening available at the time. And uh, so there are some tools which can help us to distinguish between malignant and benign disease, like CA99 marker, ERCP, brush cytology, which could be improved at least in the, in the uh, sensitivity by fish, and uh, direct visualization by cholangioscopy and intraductal ultrasound could be helpful, help uh, as well. Uh, in our institute, we are very active in uh, liver transplantations. Uh, in, it counts for almost uh, 150 uh, liver transplantation per year. And with, what is really stable over the time is the uh, proportion of the PSC, which accounts of 10% of entire transplanted populations, which is almost double than the 
uh, report uh, from the European Liver Transplant Tension Registry, which is uh, around 4% inside of the Europe. Uh, endoscopic management or strategy is targeted uh, on the recognition and the treatment of dominant stricture, which is, sorry for that, which is characterized by a very narrow uh, place of, uh, in this uh, common bile duct and uh, very narrowing parts of the hepatic duct. And uh, there are very clear clinical consequences of dominant structure, like uh, obstructive symptoms, which could lead to the compensation of the liver function and, of course, risk of uh, bacterial cholangitis. On this picture, it's, on the, it's very clearly seen the dominant structure near the cystic duct and uh, balloon, balloon dilation of this part of the CBD. Uh, stenting is really controversial. This is the study was published last year. The distance study was prematurely uh, stopped due to high incidence of significant serious adverse event in the stenting group. Mainly, it was the cholangitis and pancreatitis. Uh, as you can see, the difference was 42% in the stenting group and 10% in the, the balloon dilation group. Uh, dominant strictures, as very often, as I mentioned, it's sometimes present in up to two-thirds of the, the population. And this study was published in 2002, and uh, of uh, 100 to six patients were treated with ursodeoxycholic acid for up to 13 years. Half of them developed dominant strictures. And those patients were treated according to our current opinion, so that's mean by balloon dilation. And what's happened after that, in five years of follow-up, that almost all patients in all stages of the histological stage of the disease this we are not using too much today. We are not using too much uh, biopsy for today uh, in, to, uh, in today's management of PSC patients. But what's happened that overall survivor improved in all the stages uh, as compared with the myoprognostic model. So, uh, sorry. Uh, what is uh, the role of ursodeoxycholic acid? Uh, acid? Currently, uh, there is no established drug for the treatment of PSC. But we can summarize some studies which was performed on the topic of uh, or the role of UDCA in PSC patients. Except improvement on the liver tests, there was no statistically significant difference in the uh, life expectancy, in pruritus, in mortality, in fatigue, and in development of cholangiocarcinoma, and even in the histological progression of the disease. But uh, this study, of which used uh, 30 milligrams per kilogram per day was published in 2009 with follow-up of six years, was prematurely uh, stopped due to high rate of adverse event, mainly related to the portal hypertension, even death, development and viruses, and a higher need for the liver transplantation. So uh, we don't use this level of treatment, we don't use this uh, high dose of ursodeoxycholic acid in the treatment for PSC patients since that time anymore. But at the dose of uh, 15 to 20 milligrams per day, uh, UDCA is very well tolerated and of course improved believer biochemistry. And despite the lack of clear evidence from the prospective studies, 
most centers would combine also deoxycholic acid and endoscopic therapy in a dominant structure as well. So uh, mainly US authors do not advocate UDCA in PSC patients, but their opinion is currently changes. So what could happen if we will stop the treatment of UDCA? This is a nice Polish study from uh, 2014, and it's clearly showing us that at three months of the, of the, uh, after the stopping the, uh, the, the UDCA, discontinuation causes significant elevation of the uh, biochemistry, including the LP, GGT, and, uh, and uh, other tests, and uh, was uh, associated with the significant changes on the concentration of the bile acid metabolism. And even 40% of the patients were reporting the increasing uh, pruritus. Uh, so, what's happened with the alkaline phosphatase? We can use and uh, as a good discrimination factor for the patients with the bad and poor prognosis. On the left side, you can see that the threshold of 1.3 of the upper, alumat, upper limit of normal was associated with the better prognosis for the patients. And what's very important is, on the right side, you can see that even the 40% of deterioration under the treatment for one year is associated with the better survival of the patient. So uh, I think that uh, even this, uh, this finding indicate that alkaline fat phosphatase can be serve as a good prognostic marker or potential endpoint for clinical studies, which is, by, by, uh, by the way, difficult to establish. So this is the, the proposed algorithm for UDCA treatment coming from the United States, so very conservative, but I think uh, it's uh, very reasonable. So what should we do with the patient? So uh, should take uh, care of them if uh, the alkaline phosphatase is above 1.5 times above the normal limits and associated with the uh, clinical symptoms like pruritus. We have to avoid uh, or rule out the, the risk of the uh, cholangiocarcinoma. And in those patients, we can start with the UDCA in the dose of 17 to 23 milligrams per kilo and day. And after half of the year of the treatment of after six months, if there is alkaline phosphatase normalization or 40% reduction from the baseline or any symptomatic improvement. So this is the good patient for the continuing treatment of the urso deoxycholic patient uh, acid. Sorry. Uh, there is a very clear relationship between PSC and uh, IBD uh, and uh, what is what is very interesting is that, uh, that the, the, the risk of the colon cancer is very, is much more higher in patients with IBD as compared with the PSC at, uh, uh, alone. And uh, long-term risk of colon cancer in PSC patient with IBD is about threefold higher than risk of the, our nightmare is cholangiocarcinoma. So colorectal cancer is much more, uh, is, is present more, uh, in more patients than cholangiocarcinoma itself. Uh, the, also, the oxycholic acid could modify the risk of inflammatory, uh, of IBD-related colorectal cancer. This is the meta-analysis present and published in 2013. And uh, overall, the metallysis didn't show any uh, beneficial eff uh, effect of urosoidoxycholic acid in the risk of colorectal, cancer, uh, colorectal neoplasia. But if we look on advanced colorectal neoplasia, there was seen a very significant effect of the treatment. So that means 
on the risk of the colorectal cancer and high-grade dysplasia. And in subgroup analysis, the low-dose ursodeoxycholic acid, mean in between 8 to 15 milligrams per kilo and day, and day was associated with the significant risk reduction of the colorectal neoplasia of the whole colorectal neoplasia. But again, the use of high-dose ursodeoxycholic acid has opposite effect. So sometimes more is less, and uh, so high dose of ursodeoxycholic acid is associated with the high risk, high risk of neoplasia. And this explanation of uh, such a paradox uh, includes the alteration of colonic bile acid milieu, which is increased, which could be increased uh, by the lithocholic acid. In the, under the high dose of UDCA treatment. PSC could recur after liver transplantation, and magnetic resonance we are usually using as a first line, as a first choice uh, uh, evaluation of the intrahepatic and, and extrahepatic biliary tree after the liver transplantation. Uh, differential diagnosis of Recurrent PSC uh, is uh, very wide. Many diseases could mimic this condition, and uh, so we are usually, usually confirm uh, recurrent PSC by the histology, especially um, uh, chronic rejection is the, is the difficult to, uh, to uh, distinguish between those two entities. There is no proven medical therapy for recurrent PSC, but many authors uh, uh, are using the uh, ursodeoxycholic acid. Even there is no prospective studies, so we don't know uh, the, the clear effect of ursodeoxycholic acid. But what condition is that should be advocate for the ursodeoxycholic acid is the is the patient uh, with uh, also with the uh, ulcerative colitis yeah, uh, as, a, as an edit, addition disease for, for PSC. So there are some novel therapies like ursodeoxycholic uh, acid, which represent a homolog uh, of ursodeoxycholic uh, acid lack, uh, lacking one uh, methylene group on the side chain of the molecule. Uh, it's more hydrophilic. It's uh, giving us more, more bio, uh, bicarbonate-rich umbrella. There are some addition mechanisms beneficial for PSC patients. And uh, the phase two clinical trials in uh, PSC uh, was um, associated with a significant LP reductions. And uh, phase three clinical trial is on the way. So let me conclude, ladies and gentlemen. The diagnosis is, uh, of the PSC is mainly based on MRCP and always with the collaborations with colonoscopy. Uh, PSC IBD represents a high risk of colorectal neoplasia. Endoscope therapy is currently based on dilation of dominant stricture. Alkaline phosphatase levels is associated with the better prognosis or with the uh, prognosis of PSC patients and UDCA for sure is currently very reasonable medical therapy, but uh, should be and it is uh, effective in hemoprevention and of the colorectal neoplasia, but should be carefully indicated and dosed properly. And I think there are some novel therapy on the horizon. Thank you very much. Thank you for a wonderful